Right, that's the underlaying for the rear. They just drop in and now we'll do the rear carpet. through the right hole. Oh, oh the screwdrivers are in the house so I'll just have to There we go. That's that one on. That's the difficult one. Except the seatbelt stuck, I can't remove. Fiddly. Get this in. Oh, there we go. That's in there. It's in there. Get to that way around. I'm only doing these finger tight at the moment just to get things where they live. It's a bit of a chore just to ferry everything in and out of the house. Okay, that's everything loosely assembled. I'll go and get the next bit. Next bit is the front carpet. Remember, I put these pads on the back, so there's no extra bits and bobs to do on that front. Well, with how successful drying out the car seems to have been, fingers crossed, 
I'm actually going to risk doing a few jobs to get the carpets back in, namely the boot carpet and the front carpet I've taken out. I do have some leftover insulation from when I did the BX carpet, which similarly had a water leak that was infuriating to find. So I'm going to replace that blue carpet that the Maestro had in with what I've got left over of that. It's really easy stuff to work with. You can see this is the original pad from the passenger side. Floor pans are basically mirrored, so all I need to do is trace this onto this stuff, which is a variation on the same thing. And the paper side is the backing for the self-adhesive, so I can stick this to the back of the carpet. Makes it a lot easier to deal with. Since we want a mirrored pair, you can just turn it over like that, and then it gives you two pieces. A lick so. I'm just cutting it out with the world's worst scissors because my good scissors have gone missing. This may take some time. doesn't help that this stuff's actually fairly thick. Let's see if I can get some better scissors. Better scissors. There we go. So all you do with that is you peel off this paper backing and then you just glue it straight on the back of the carpet. Just here, all nice and dry. And you can see on the back of this that these go There, like that, and that will just give us some extra sound deadening in the car. And the back of this foam is fairly clean. I think I got this from Woolies. I get most trim things from Woolies, they're very good. I'll pop a link in the description for them. So, yeah, this is pretty sticky stuff. And it's that easy to install, which is nice. Oh yeah. And this has to be fed through behind there, which is quite annoying.
this is going to be a fight, I'll bring you back in a minute. Right, after some fighting, and surprisingly little swearing, that's the carpet in. So we're going to start putting the plastic trims in now. These little square ones, they go under the carpet. These big grey ones go over it. easy. Next we have the long ones which go here. And these are held in with some little press studs which I'll do later. So it's a little trickier, it has to go around the bonnet release lever. Just have to finagle the carpet around a bit. There we go. There we go. B pillar trim. This one's nice and easy. underneath the top half. Then push down the door seal over the top of it, hold it all in. And we have the rear side trims to do. Seal off because that catches the edge. And then I think these are supposed to pop out, so we'll just get those out. And 
I don't know where my trim removal tool is at the moment, so I'll have to improvise. And what we'll do is we'll slide these back in the holders and then that'll make it a lot easier to install because then you can just line everything up which is great when you can't actually see what you're doing Wrong with screws. It's quick to put together when it's new. There we are. And then door seal back on. And that little gap there is for the parcel shelf that lives in that gap. There's one screw here. And then this trim goes on. And this rear trim goes underneath the front one and just slot together. And again, everything's held down with little plastic pop fitting things. Last piece to go in is going to be the parcel shelf and the repair I did I reinforced it a little bit with some epoxy I don't think it needed it but belt and braces never does any harm and the little end bit there you can just see the haze of the glue but that's all back in one piece now so I can drop that in I didn't fill that gap there the plastic's actually um, sprained out a bit but it won't make any difference when I fit it so now I just have to remember how this goes back on. First thing we have to do is feed the seatbelt through. in a minute.
I'll just have to take out a bunch of screws, which I put back in the holes so I didn't lose them. shelf in but let them learn. That's how they'd repaired it before. I couldn't really figure out how it was working when I saw it, but uh, it wasn't attached, so I just glued the broken pieces back together and it worked well enough. So, oh, this one. Just above the rear light, there's another screw. Although it is a lot easier without that modified bracket in there. And they all hold the trim to the side of the car. And when I tighten these up, I'm not going to go too tight with them. That's how you break the brackets. So just go until it feels. It's about snug. There we go. It's so easy to over tighten the plastic things. Screws. Those screws I was talking about live underneath here. Uh, I can't see anything on this view screen. Um, hopefully that shows them up. And there's one just in the back there above the light. So the next thing to do is probably the plastic poppers on the side trims, I think. Let's get those. So there's my box of fixings. I'd forgotten quite how many of these were missing. Uh, I think I've got three in total, and I think I need about a dozen, which is great. But uh, one I did forget was there's a trim piece that goes on there, which looks like this. I don't know how it's supposed to go, but it looks like this one's actually split, but that means you can get it around the seat belt. Right, let's do some bolts up and I'm going to see if I can find some more of these trim clips. Um, I do need more than I've got to hand. Finally, it's starting to look like a car again. Parcel shelf supports in. I've got the parcel shelf there waiting to go. Uh, this little webbing handle here. I didn't realise that was there until I put the seat back in. That's to help you actually lift the seat. And it had obviously got folded under, so it's nice to have access to that again. 
I did try swapping around the lap belt and the buckle because I feel like they should be the other way around. That Torx bolt comes undone fine, that one is trying to chew up the head and I don't have an impact driver to hand so I'm going to leave that for now, there's very rarely anyone in the back of the car. I just quickly vacuumed out the interior because some of the uh, underlay stuff had left fluff everywhere but that's looking a lot better now. Back seats in properly. It smells better in here as well now. It's, it's actually dry, which it wasn't. The main problem I've got is the push clip stud things that hold in the sill trim. I've got three and one works, two are demolished. I don't think I've lost them. I think they were all missing when I got the car. But because they're all missing, I'm just gonna get a bag of generic push clip pins in as close a gray as I can find and that will hold those back in. For now, all of the trims will stay in place fine. Gear knobs back in, all nice and shiny and clean. Seat bolts in there. I do still need to give the interior vinyls a good treatment, but that can come after I've got the seats in, which is gonna be the next job. One little job I need to do is put the rear speaker back in. I took that out when I was repairing the shelf bracket there. It's worth noting that this car still has its original British Leyland speakers, the old paper cones. Somebody's repaired this one with glue? I'm not sure. I've ordered a new set of speakers, I'm not going anything fancy, I'm just replacing like for like. But for now, this one actually does work, most of the speakers in the car don't, so I'm just going to put the Felt clean side up and pop that back in so I've at least got some noise. I'm not interested in upgrading the audio on this car. I'm quite happy with it just standard. So that's just a case of four screws underneath here and it plugs straight in. It's easy peasy. Time for the last bit to go in, which is just these front seats. They're nice and easy. There's four bolts, two at the back, two at the front, like I covered before. Not sure how much you can see from there. Or here, we'll see how we go. The trickiest part is just getting everything lined up. Get things started. Sure when you're doing it on your own. four different pieces of trim they're all fighting each other independently I'm just trying to get things started much easier said than done No, nope, I have to do this off camera. There's a lot of jobs like this on interiors. Driver's seat in, and one of my bugbears with these. Torx fittings is this front one here just as I'd got it tightened up 
it just rounded off all the lobes. So it's basically now an Allen key. What's wrong with bolts? Just regular hex headed bolts. Right, let's get the passenger seat in and then this interior is back together and hopefully I can do that before it starts to rain again because it's threatening. Right, that's all of the seats in, everything finished, interior back together as much as I can do. So let's have a quick look inside. I'd say that looks a lot better, it's more like a car again which is nice. It's not so tinny when you shut the doors as well. I mean, it's still tinny, but it goes with a bit more of a clunk now. So yeah, nice glare covered gear up. Carpet's back in. Everything smells better in here. I, I think it's been pretty much damp since I got it because it's I've just not got to the bottom of the issues with the water. But it's all together. Looks all right. Next job will be the headlining. Not today. Uh, that's a full day job. So I'm going to hop online and see if I can find some trim clips for fixing these back in place. Of the ones I've got, the very few, only one of them actually worked. So I only had one that I could actually use. But, uh, yeah. Oh, tell a lie. I have one in there. And I know these ones are exactly the same as the ones used in uh, Fiat, Ducato, Peugeot, Boxer, that sort of thing. The only problem is, I can't get them in this colour. I can get them in a pale grey, a beige, a black, even a white, but I can't get this dark grey. But there's lots of other designs of these pins, so it doesn't have to be this exact one. The important bit is that this stem is long enough and the right diameter to go through the trim and hold it in place, and the size of the head doesn't really matter, as long as it's bigger than the, um, the little slot in there that you can see. So I'll just get a set of those, and as long as they all look the same, they're not gonna, it won't matter so much if they're not the right colour. This has been a job. Note to self, don't leave your windows open when it's raining. <laughs>